With the Antonio Conte era seeming becoming to an end at Tottenham Hotspur, it's natural wonder how a regime that promised so much should end up with such disappointment. In last few days, debate over who will come out worst from this appearance has escalated since Conte set fire to his relationship with entire club, effectively making situation untenable. Conte himself? The so-called series winner who failed to motivate his players in the end and now falls with them to such an amazing degree. Or is it the president Daniel Levy? Ignoring warnings that Conte would act as he did. The man now runs a club that is about to take the same position after sacking Jose Mourinho too. Years ago, perhaps the subject of your anger is the actors. After all, they were the constants in the mess of four head coaches who lost their jobs in less than four years. And then there's the reputation of the club that finds itself in circus mode once again. Muddy by its manager. Many us in media will feel a little embarrassed given that Conti's series winning credentials appear stronger than ever when his departure is confirmed. At the time of his appointment, and at end last season, the truth is, no one comes out of this situation looking good. Despite attempts to portray Tottenham as an impossible task after the Southampton draw, it's easy to argue that Conte's reputation was damaged the most the Spurs appointment of Conte was seen as a coup in November 2021. But 16 months later, it's hard to imagine a Premier League club coming after him. Despite some notable successes, too aggression, too much money, 2-3-4-3, to three. Conte was always eager to emphasize that the job at Spurs was not for him. But by doing so he undermined his own credibility. Why would you take a job that you turned down a few months ago and didn't think is appropriate for your level? During his tenure, Conte felt like someone who was in a relationship he didn't want to be in, but who also needed companionship and therefore perpetuated it while constantly undermining his partner. The message was essentially, yes, I'll stay with you but you're lucky to have me and I won't be here for very long, underscoring the brevity of his contract. The Premier League job that Conte really wanted was Manchester United. In fact that many United fans wished they had hired him at end of last season but now feeling quite smug is an indictment of how landscape has changed club is playing long game and instead. Eric Ten Hag brings me. We must not forget how well Conte performed last season or the difficult personal circumstances he has endured in recent months. But now returning to Italy seems like his most likely option. In April 2022 there were whispers that he wanted the Paris Saint-Germain job, he rejected these proposals, and in many ways this seemed appropriate. But his disappointing record in Europe certainly counted against him, as did other big clubs across the continent. Considering the Spurs' miserable exit from the Champions League to AC Milan this season, his time in North London will not have improved his reputation. The AC Milan draw also showed Conti's prudence and lack of tactical flexibility, two charges that became more evident during his time with the Spurs. Conte now finds himself at a crossroads, potentially as one of stray big-name managers on the rental gun carousel, comparable to position of Jose Mourinho after Manchester United, where people are willing to give him the benefit of doubt given his previous successes and indecision about how much of his fault this failure was but wondered if it had started to decline after a decade at its peak. Not being able to predict that Conti's best days may be behind him, as Mourinho proved this when he stepped into the Spurs, is one of the charges leveled against Levy. Was another Chelsea knockdown known for reactive football really what was needed less than seven months after firing another manager who fit that description? especially considering he's been talking about the need for a head coach with Spurs DNA in the intervening period. Spurs fans hold an anti-Levi banner in Fulham in January to Levy's credit. Conte was brought in first foremost to save the season and secure Champions League football. 
he did, but his appointment ultimately proved to be a sticky plaster and had little strategic or long-term value. After sacking Mourinho, the Spurs find themselves in pretty much the same position they were in two years ago. And at a huge financial cost perhaps the most damning thing is that no one can say that Levy was not warned. When United voiced their previous colleagues about how Conte worked, some at Chelsea said, if you thought Jose was a hard worker, Tottenham would certainly hear similar. Even in the public realm, Conte has always been volatile, so none of this came as a surprise. His miserable second season at Chelsea was eerily similar to the one currently playing for the Spurs. Back then, as now, Chelsea players were fed up with Conte's intensity and mood swings. Many Tottenham fans have little sympathy for this sentiment and agree with the core of what Conte said on Saturday about the players' failures. In their view, players ultimately let down four Spurs managers in a row, and they should take some of the blame for Conte era's failure. Yes, players have to take some responsibility, but given the brutality of the competition, you cannot be an elite football player without extraordinary mental strength and dedication. Therefore, it makes no sense to suggest that Spurs players somehow lack the fortitude needed to be successful. Collectively, the vast majority of players at this level will respond positively if you give them appropriate structures and someone who can motivate them. Can Spurs honestly say that they have provided necessary structure to players in combative Mourinho? Clearly short-term Conte and clearly not good enough Nuno Espirito Santo? He looks like a big, spoiled, blaming kid to me. Here's Danny Kellyward's full two-minute commentary on Antonio Conte's Tottenham rant.